out some technical difficulties as uh, I like to keep it interesting by just forgetting pieces to make Brand's job more more interesting. <laughs> apparently, as we travel, <laughs> um, dude, congrats on the Rogue Invitational. Thank you, my man. Ha- I know, I know, it's been a long road getting back. I know that you've been fighting with back and hip stuff, right? Like uh, it's been hip, knees, shoulder, uh, yeah, nerve damage, uh, elbows, wrists. So no. feeling feeling back on in prime or much? I mean, I, I in many ways I'm stronger than ever before. Uh, one thing that I've been struggling with the most is uh, deadlifts, getting my deadlift ba- strength back up to where it used to be, just because of the hips and the knees. But those are it's continually getting better. I'm working with uh, physical therapy San Pedro. See, those guys are really good. They really know what they're doing, um, and they're getting me up to speed. And I also got some stem cells from Bio Accelerator in Colombia. How was that? Re- freaking great. Within months, I noticed a huge difference. Really? Most of my tendonitis was gone. Wow. So th- the the way it works, like the stem cells gives you the building blocks to then repair your body, but then you still need to do physical therapy to make sure that you heal right and that you don't uh, those injuries don't keep reoccurring. Oh, so like make sure you're still doing the work for imbalances and all those exactly. Kind of things because that if caused. those imbalances are there, even though if you fix the injury, they're going to come back. So make sure that you got your body balanced, get uh, fix up your deficiencies, and then of course get the stem cells in, and it just accelerates the process of healing. Man, um, so yeah, down to Columbia, the bio accelerator, so hyperbaric chamber, the whole thing, right? No, like, I didn't do the hyperbaric chamber because I didn't fit in it. Didn't fit. <laughs> yeah, I was I trying fit. to cram you uh, in from I, the front. I, I, did, I didn't fit into a lot of things. I had to get uh. You know, they they were open to having me get an MRI there, but then I talked about my size. They're like, oh, you won't fit in the MRI machine, so I got the MRIs here, and uh, oversized like yeah MRI. Um, and yeah, then I had to take those images there. And so that they, they, I mean, they go through your MRI, look at your hip, look at your knee, and kind of see where exactly. Yeah, where exactly they need to inject the stem cells, and it's 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 a scary process because I mean, like in my hip, I had like a needle like this big going my. I was shaking, man, sweating. Just trying so not to look at it? Yeah. It's weird, right? Because, like, I remember when, when I had my knee done, you know, whether cortisone shots or even needling or anything, I remember getting my calf needled one time in this, this dry needle thing. Oh, dude. Ooh. Yeah, yeah it was, man. How was the cortisone shot? Um, I always think they're going to hurt way more than they do, and it's always like, yeah, and then it's just yeah. a weird pressure more it's than the it, pre- it's gross feeling. It's, it's yeah. the it's the idea that gets me more than the actual feeling. <laughs> yeah, for I was, sure. I, I was in the navy. And one of the shots we had to do was a peanut butter shot. It's the shot. Like, I don't know what drug it was, but, okay. but you put it in your butt, and then you can't. They call it a peanut butter shot because it feels like a peanut butter going through your butt. Oh, what? just the thick? World. Yeah, it's just thick. And then <laughs> the next day you can't walk. Right? What is this? Yeah. What is this they're putting in there? I have no clue, man. Like, I love the guy. Uh, it sounds good. <laughs> oh, we, no, no, we had no option. Like bend over for yeah. the Navy. Uh, we had no option. We walked through a uh, – we had multiple shots. We had like tetanus. Just sh- a long line. Long line. Just, like, it was like a drive-thru. <laughs> it was a drive-thru, dude. <laughs> Just, it's not a whole lot different than we're currently doing in yeah, places. Yeah. It was cool. Uh, yeah. Man. So, any more banged up stuff, or would you go back again to – I mean, is that like a recurring I, thing? I, you I plan to go back because, I mean, it was profound how much better I felt. And, uh, go like, they don't – they suggest not going more than once a year. Mm-hmm. So, after a year, I want to go back again. So, okay. Yeah, my plan is to go in the summer. So, now, basically, this is general maintenance as part of the career yeah, forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, who knows what type of you know mileage that could add to a career? For sure, right? Like, I mean, yeah. even if it's an extra, you know, three years. That's all I want personally. Well, that, yeah. That's probably, I mean, that's way over ten percent of a career. That's a yeah. huge bump. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I don't think I'd be competing without it. Really? Well, I was to the point where I'm like, I think I'm done. Wow. I got that, and it gave me like a second wind. So. How was that? Like, what was the realization of just starting to kind of feel like, I don't know if we can continue? <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was hard for me. It was hard because uh, a lot of my identity and the um, joy came out of being, like, a strong man athlete. And um, I have many plans and goals in life, but I felt like it was too soon. Like, I, I really want to push out a few more competitions at the very minimum and to realize that maybe I won't be able to get up to my old strength and get beyond that uh, strength that I had was it was hard for me to face that yeah I remember uh getting hurt and kind of having that feeling with with my knee and realizing like yeah. okay so there won't be any new PRs yeah. in the gym 
And it's a weird thought to realize, but you know, where I landed on it was just kind of like, at some point, that's true. Yeah. That's coming. Yeah. And I'm too much of an idiot to believe that I was going to walk away smart. Hmm. Like, I know that I'm leaving on my shield, man. Like, I yeah. know that I'm going out <laughs> because I have to leave, not yeah. because, like, that's enough. I will <laughs> happily change. That, that, that's, <laughs> my, that's the thing. That's my goal. My goal is to leave it in that, all right, I'm done, guys. I, I hope I'm smart enough to do that. Burn your shoes on the platform at a world's strongest man and be like, Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are the big contests coming up this year? I know we've had such a weird shift in tons of stuff with Strongman. That's right. Uh, I'll be getting ready for the Arnold Classic in the beginning of March and then World Strongest Man in May. And after that, I'll see where my body's at. Um, I really like this rhythm of going hard and taking a big break. Big break. Yeah. Define, define big break. Like I mean, what? I just took a year and a half off. A year and a half. And it was fantastic. I, I love that. I came back. I felt fresh. I, Gave everything time to heal. I, I won, and then yeah, I ran. yeah, right. And I, I don't want to keep grinding and pushing myself. Uh, just yeah, I'd much rather be able to hit it hard, pull back, hit it hard, pull back. Uh, if I could maintain a rhythm like that, that'd be ideal. So about five years ago, or 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 so, let's call it what, the year you win World Strongest Man is what twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Yep. Um, how many contests are you doing that season? Um, we, we not that many. That was not so bad. No, we did Santa Monica. We did Santa Monica Arnold's. Arnold's. Arnold's then took a big break. Yeah, and then, then World Songs Man. Okay, and then uh, I did like a world record Steinborn squat in between there. Sure, uh, a fun fun thing to do yeah, with just, that rogue or uh, with the record breaker stuff. That's right. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that was easy enough. So I felt like okay, I could do that and not damage myself. And then we went to Wembley. And then we went to Wembley, and I was beat up. Oh, yeah. I was beat up during that. Beat up for the tra- from the training, getting ready for it? For or? the training. for Because after winning Worlds, I wanted to take a break. <laughs> but they were urging me to come back to compete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. And I was, just, <laughs> I was lipping, going through Wembley. Oh, man. It's never good going in yeah. on your heels of like, we need to not make this worse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so after that, I, I – I think 2020, I did the Arnold. Uh, but but uh, to answer your question, there was a year where I did 11 competitions. <laughs> and I've never been the same since. Really? Uh, that was a mistake. You, you know, uh, my favorite way I've ever heard that description of, like, going too far yeah. was, uh, do you know Kelly Starrett, uh Supple Leopard, um, Mobility Wad? I've heard that. Good, I've good. heard of that name, yeah. We were we were talking about stuff and uh, just as athletes and how we treat our body through the different chapters of our life. And he's like, look, whenever my time's up and they cut this tree in half and they examine the rings, <laughs> there's a decade of fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah someone's amazing. gonna look yeah. at this and be like, oof. Yeah, that was an ugly stretch. Oh, gosh, that's <laughs> so true. I especially, I'm blown away by in my early 20s, uh, I was able to abuse myself. Like I could. Like hit heavy squats, and then the next day go go for a hike, and uh, then the day after that do heavy deadlifts, then get drunk, then like I mean like drunk, drunk. Then the following day do strongman training, hit some PRs. Uh, looking back at that, I'm like, I had no idea, right? Like the toll that takes. Now the mid twenties are a very we're very resilient. Yeah. <laughs> it's an incredible, like, what I, made of rubber we all And are. it's like, I keep I, I keep hearing that through my mid-20s, like, you, you can't do this when you're older. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> this is nothing. Yeah, it uh, it catches up to all of us. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I saw you guys, you guys started leaning into doing tech stuff, like mm-hmm. building out an app and doing all that. And, and I find all of that so rad and foresight and, and a way that we haven't seen within the strongman community people be able to reach people that way yeah, yeah. Well, we're, i think we keep we're we confidently can say we're the first strongman app out there you know we have all the exclusive content con our program is you know, martins does right on mm-hmm. yeah you can follow him and then we're about to release a new update to that where we have multiple packages so the building box of strongman the middle stages of strongman and then the elite stages of strongman and it's educational videos and everything there for the lifts and yeah, everything. We wow. don't every every video, every workout. It's definitely a huge task because 
There's so many workouts. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> Every single week we're working on getting those videos out there. Yeah. At least once they're in. Yeah. Like, allegedly, you don't have to make them again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then there's, like, uh, chest-supported rows versus rows. You know, and then there's isometric pull-ups. Pull-ups. Pause on top. Pause on the bottom. I do so <laughs> many interesting variations in my lifting. And we get to a point where, like, Okay, do we just put out a generic exercise video and then put in the description that they're pausing at the 90-degree joint angle? Just pause angle? the video. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. just slow it down and post. This is the spot. Pause it there. Yeah. No, but that is the challenge. In, in, in addition, it's like the, the, the point, whole point, uh, purpose of the app right now is for people to follow my training currently as I lead up the show. So every single week that I write training for myself, I'm putting it out there. Yeah. And I'm putting like an intro video as to why I'm doing it. Um, just discussing it a little bit. So that, that's where the hard work is. So if you're a competitor watching this podcast, you can download an app. What's the app? It's called Wreck it Power. Wreck it Power. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I, and you Google, guys, Google play and Apple. Store. Yeah. That's rad, man. I, I, I love seeing guys, flesh out their world man and, and lean into if people are interested in the information from you guys why not give them everything we can as, as content creators if mm -hmm. that's what we do that's our job yeah yeah i mean we get to live a very very cool life that didn't exist 15 years ago like nope you know, I, that's it's something i find really fascinating and have talked about with different people in the podcast with who guys like you guys who are building this type of community and, and space we're we're in a very strange spot. We're the first generation of people that the internet didn't exist, then it exists, and now we're really getting to see how this tool can be used for anyone yeah. to make an incredible living. Yeah. Like, like, I imagine you guys as well. When you guys start started making content, like how many years with YouTube have you guys been? Watching? Or, or building? Oh, through four years now. Right. 19, 20, 21. 20, oh, we got 22 here. Yeah. You know, even then in 2019, to hear to hear a kid be like, "Oh, I want to do YouTube." It felt weird and cringy to mm -hmm. be like, oh, "You don't it, it, like go to college." Yeah. yeah. And now, Everyone I don't did. know that I feel that. Yeah, way. I know. Like all my little, um, like all my mm -hmm. uh, kid, all, all my friends who have kids, like, "Oh, I want to be a YouTube star." I'm like, they, "Oh my gosh, all kids want to be YouTube stars like, these oh, days." Oh, why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah why it. wouldn't yeah. you want to be for one? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy because, like, we are the producers, we are the directors, we are the script writers, mm -hmm. and then um, majority of our uh, influences at YouTube was watching a lot of Anthony Bourdain, watching a lot of the documentary style, and um, I actually used to work for Iron Mind, but I, I remember Iron Mind? Yeah, 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 yeah. Randall Strawson. Randall yeah, Strawson. I know Randy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I got an Iron Mind cover back in the day. Oh yeah, I told him. Like, Classic. I told him like, hey, we gotta bring back the old weighting, weightlifting videos, and he's like, oh, I'm too old for that. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna start his YouTube channel. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, it's it's kind of cool to think like you have the behind the scenes of what Strongman trains for. Everything. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's why I wanted to have both of you guys. Like, I'm so fortunate that I have a wonderful right hand to help build everything we've got. That's how I feel, Brent. yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, and again, what a power for you to be able to work with someone that yeah. you align with that wants to make content. And Yeah, we were just talking this morning, man. I was like, man, I I don't want to like boast myself, but I've done a lot to help Martinez his career. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Hell, from yeah. Hefty, Geico. I just got him an interview slot with Today's Show. Oh, man. Yeah. Epic. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great, dude. No agencies, man. That was just pure hustle, bro. So, like. Write a book. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. You think so? Dude, it, it, the story's fascinating, right? You're born in another country, coming here, like, it's rad. Yeah, I just feel like I'm in middle. I'm in the middle pages right now. 100, percent you are. Yeah, 100 percent you are. But you've also now had that window of like, I don't know that I'm gonna get to do this anymore. That's true. It's called. Yeah. I told him we should make a movie called Latvian Boy. And Arnold Schwarzenegger plays yeah. him. Do both. <laughs> Arnold plays him. <laughs> Arnold plays. Did they just young him up? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. The Latvian Boy. Now the the beauty of a book is that once it's out. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Mm, that's cool. Right. Yeah. And so, like, once it's written, like, you don't have to make another video for it or add another chapter or add an additional mm. workout. Like, that's yeah. just your story. 
Yeah. And uh, it's really cool to get to create and put one out. It, it's a cool feeling of like, yeah, we fucking made a book. <laughs> now you yeah. become an author. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I highly recommend it, man. I think I think the story. I've never is thought wild. about it, so that that's cool to think of. Do you have any books out? I have three. I uh, I have three training manuals. I've oh, hell yeah. Uh, so, you know, one for the Highland Games, a general strength version of that, and then one cool. on the technical side of all the throws. Okay. Um, I've been working on one for the last, since 2016, Oof. Uh, when my knee started going bad. Oh, yeah. So I was I started off writing it journaling about, here's what surgery looks like, here's what rehab's going to yeah. look like, I'm taking a year off, I'm going to show you everything it does to get back to compete. Wow. And it never happened. Oh. So it was nine knee surgeries and then eventually a total knee replacement Holy and like shit. fully realizing. I can't believe you had nine surgeries. Dude got, and then chronic pain got to the point where I traveled yeah. with a cane. I like, oh, walked wow. with a cane for over a year. Holy hell. And so, like, yeah, sharing that of like, man, it gets dark. Yeah. And like, get that out and rough. figure out your way out of that hole. Yeah. And, uh. Um, you have one of those like cool knee, knee surgeries so It's like titanium? It is. Okay, cool. Yeah. What, what caused that damage? Um, it was worn out from competing, but there wasn't yeah. ever a catastrophic failure. Just and so gradual decline. Yeah. It was 10 years of throwing and spinning one direction and grinding. There's that so knee. much torque in that. Yep. And no I, ACL the whole time. Yeah. Oof. Oh my gosh. Which is yeah. fine, but it ain't helping. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, it, it, it's crazy to me how much torque uh, I, I see a lot of guys have more than anything, knee injuries yep. in that sport. Yep. It, it, it's part mm. of it. I mean, that's where the, you know, you're not going to see torn biceps or any of the yeah. other stuff that comes with strongman, but knees, hips, back, get Yikes. pretty shot. I have a question. Imagine. Do you think throwing should be a strongman sport? Size, weight over bar? Ooh, do I think other events? Yeah. Like the fucking log thing you guys Caber? look at. Yeah. Um, that is such a technical. Yes. Such a random sport, too. I'll be, um, what am I watching here? I would say most of the strongman events, while wildly technical, yeah. log or anything else, I would still say they are 70 to 80% Max strength still really matters. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, whereas weightlifting, not as much, hmm. right? Because if it was, you'd be a very competitive weightlifter. Yeah. Just strength to, to, to technique issue, right? Yeah. Uh, Highland Games is... Technical. 80% technical. And then if you don't have that part, the strength doesn't matter. Yeah. We've seen plenty of strong guys try to get into the sport, and they just can't. Except for one, I would say. Well, he throws weight over bar well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that event... Yeah. Translates great to yeah. strongman. Mm. Um, but, I mean, at a world championship uh, in 20... But you have, to, you have to do any, like, fancy spins and time the release on that? Uh, I couldn't do that. Or, or even just a standing stone throw, which is mm. about as basic of an event gets, right? Yeah. Um, it's still really technical. So, in 2015 at the world championships in Pleasanton, uh, Haffy was out there. Yeah. And was doing weight over bar as an expedition to put a ton of people in the crowd. And uh, he jumped in on the Braemar Stone throw with us. Yeah. At the World Championship. That's cool. And took last. Wow. wow. I mean, the other guys. That's, that's the. Standing th stone throw. You're uh -huh. not even having to spin wow. or do anything. It's about as brute force. Yeah. As a simple event can get. It's a 28 pound stone. Holy shit. And it's a heavy ass stone. It is. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at that time, I'm six foot. 280 yeah one of the smaller guys matt from canada is probably six foot 245 yeah you mm -hmm. know what i mean so if i'm looking at the lineup of who should win <laughs> yeah. any event it, it ought to be that monster yeah right yeah, <laughs> yeah. You and would think. and that's what he said afterwards He's like i just you know this goes to show what a technical thing this is yeah that these guys are the best in the world at this right and i thought wow. that was a really cool thing that is so cool to show so. I, I like that story. Thanks for telling me yeah. that. Yeah. Is Denny Stones part of the um, Highland game, or is that like a – Yes that, and no. It's like a gray section of straw, it's, man. It's, it's it, one of those gray sections <laughs> that are – it's for sure more Highland gamey, but I think strictly because it's in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like that's a, that's a grip event. Have you tried that? I've done them. Oh, it's yeah. brutal, yeah. Have you done them? Yeah. yeah. Have hurts. you done the the actual ones in Scotland? Um. Or did you do a replica with Rogue? At I a, think it was a Rogue replica. Yeah. Those are so, dude. The first time I saw the replica mm -hmm. Husafeld and replica Denny Stones, incredible. I remember looking at them on stage at yeah. the at the Arnold one year, and I'm like, I can't fucking believe they got those stones here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, who yeah. who fucking let that happen? <clears throat> yeah, right. Like, like, oh, my God. And then found out and saw the video on how the replicas got Amazing, made. right? Incredible. Amazing. Unreal, yeah. You know, it's incredible. incredible. You know, Martins and I have been in Iceland like three times. I love have it. Yet to been I've been four, it. yep. You haven't been to Hoosville? Yet to been. Yeah, we. I wanted to make a Hoosville video and yet to make seen it in person. It's I'm 90 so minutes outside of Reykjavik. I'll show you exactly where. It's, oh, it's I, easy I, to get I, to. I, I, have, no I know where it is. getting there. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it's just, Dude, but, it's – Iceland's – man, it happens there. You end up getting locked in and time disappears. Yeah. It's really easy to it be is like, oh, it's 90 minutes to go do that thing, and there's it, nothing it, in between. Yeah. 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 So, like, okay, so three hours – to go carry a stone in a field, but Bro. no one's around and it's cold. Yeah. Like, and it's still a four hundred pound stone. It sucks. Yeah, we we drove five hours to see two puffins. <laughs> it was that was one of the most miserable road trips I've ever done because it was oh, supposed no. to be a sunny day, but I didn't realize like that doesn't mean just because I'm looking at the weather in Reykjavik doesn't mean like <laughs> ten minutes outside of Reykjavik is a different world. It means nothing over yeah. there. Holy shit! Yeah. It was just like. Uh, yeah, five or six hours we were driving north, uh, northwest, making it to like one of the farthest points in the farthest northwest. point of Iceland. There were oh, m- so you guys are at Lotterberg, the cliffs at Lotterberg. Yeah, it's Puffins Point. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, w- w- in, by the way, when the sun cleared, there were like a few moments. Where we probably got like total of out of the six hour driving, <laughs> maybe thirty to forty five minutes of sunshine. Some of the most beautiful scenery I've for seen. Sure. But six hours for like a 30 minute yep. window of just holy shit. And then back to fog, rain, not being able to see 20 feet in front of us. And what, what do we do? We listen to podcasts yep. the whole time. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was, and then when we got there, we saw two puffins that were just like shivering. <laughs> <laughs> Birds were shivering. <laughs> it was so. It was even so- the puffins were looking like, this fucking sucks, <laughs> man. Like. What time of year are y'all? This was the July. summer. Oh, the summer. July. Of course it is. Yeah, it's yeah. July. And we're like, yeah, we're like bundled up as could be because it's so cold. I, I, fl- I was flying my drone around. I was herding sheep with my drone. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Okay, that was cool. That was yeah, cool. Yeah. That was so worth it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, I, I've been over a bunch now. I think this last year was, or earlier this year was the like 13th or so oh, trip right. I've yeah. been over. Wow. Holy wow. And so we, we went over with, uh, you know, first year I went over was like 2008, oh, 2009 wow. yeah. to compete. Before and, uh, Iceland was cool. <laughs> yeah, so like my the first time I did the Hoosville was like 2009. Oh, wow. And like I'm looking at the video on my YouTube channel. I think it's got like 400 views. Yeah. <laughs> no one gives a shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm carrying the Hoosville stone, and Magnus Ver is who I rode out there with. Oh, cool. And like what a fucking cool moment that like this legend yeah. you know, is riding out with me to go carry this stone. And it was, it was great. That super, is, super fun experience. Perfect. Um. Man, on our trip this summer, we did one with uh, Trova Trip, uh, a company that kind of sets up trips, and then fans can go with you, stuff like that. So we had 20 people go with us to Iceland wow. this year. I've never heard of this and Trova Trip. It was great. Yeah. It was great. So Bonnie and I went and a group of people that wanted to go to Iceland and be part of this trip. Like, we don't have to schedule or do anything. We're on the trip with them. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's yeah, cool. so you're not fixing and playing organizational. Yeah. The, uh, there's a guide that is. We really want to go to Japan. Yes. Uh, like, so bad. Um, yeah. You're going to get so attacked there. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you you yeah. stand out so bad. <laughs> yeah. And our goal is to, like, even do, like, some videos of, like, uh, working out with um, sumo, sumo wrestlers. wrestlers. Yeah. See what they're doing. Then Samurais. also, like, try to teach them some of what we do, what we do. Um, and, and just make a video of, like, traveling across Japan. Dude. Yeah. I, that's the beauty of this, right? Especially with YouTube. We can YouTube. do whatever we want. Do it. Yeah, we could do. You it. have to fund it, but yeah. <laughs> well, we got that. Yeah. We want. We're just. We, we're so ready, but and we were gonna go even uh, this November or December, and then just uh, COVID. Yeah, they're still locked down. We're they not, are in a hardcore lockdown. Yeah, but, you guys here are very different than St. Louis. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It doesn't quite exist over, over there. there. <laughs> okay. It's uh, it's it's different. It's yeah. very odd to me how we've. I think this is the most poorly managed thing globally that we've ever seen. I hope we learn from this. Yeah. What, what would it you would hope we'd learn? I I hope we learn that like okay, uh, so the government will have to if something like this comes up in the future. Uh, I I hope we learn that how people react to the government wanting to impose restrictions. Um, so how to handle that? Mm-hmm. Um, also handle the economy better, handle people not losing their work better, handle people getting compensated for losing their work, 
and then also handle it, like if if there's a vaccine that needs to be done like hopefully now we have the infrastructure to do that better and better in a safer way or a quicker way and I, I, react quicker like yeah I, I hope like some good comes out of this in that sense i think their pr work their PR team needs work. Their their marketing a, approach to this has been really poor. Oh yeah. god, it's not even about marketing. It's about like there's like gray sections of the rules. Right. Like, oh, it's a disaster. It has to be it black is. and white. Like, That's it. Just let us know. Like, no gray section. Yeah, and you know it's strange, man. Like I I got vaccinated because Excellent. I travel. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I travel, I got and it. yo, man, I I'm trying to pass this frictionlessly through Dude. this bullshit as possible. Yeah, Co- uh, me too. Costa Rica was either pay $1,000 for insurance or vaccination. I'm like, well, fuck me. You I'll- mean the free thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So fuck, <laughs> I'll just get this. I get the Johnson & Johnson, man, one and done. Yep. And then I uh, go to Costa Rica. You know, and, it, and it's it, it's re- it's weird, man, because there are crazy side effects, and we are hearing stories of people. I deadlifted 350 pounds for 10 after my shot. Do you think it gave you a superpower? No, I was, I was fucking sick as hell, bro. <laughs> I was like... I was fucking. I just wanted to prove yourself, like you still work through it. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right, right. Now, did either of you ever catch? I did get COVID. Oh, did you? I still can't smell normal. Really? It, it, it's been months, and I my smell is just wacky. Is it? And not not only like okay, f- when I first got it, it's like I couldn't smell anything, and it it, it, it was like every time I breathed in, it was like uh, kind of like the smell of snow, like a winter fresh <laughs> smell. That's great. So I, I, yeah, I, qu- for, quite frankly, I loved it. I loved it. Um, just walking around Venice, and you're like, it's really good smelling here. <laughs> Every, <laughs> just piss pile. That's also how I figured out I had COVID. Because yeah. oh, no. I started smelling, like, wow, my, my place smells really good. I smelled my armpits. I'm like, oh, I smell really good. Wait a second. When was the last time I showered? Oh, yeah. no. Huh. Well, that's strange. I opened up, like, a, a can of olives. Nothing. Like. Oh. Uh, I couldn't smell fish, couldn't smell coffee grinds. I'm like, oh gosh. Okay. What about smelling salts? Nothing. Uh, I mean, smelling salts, like. The, the... Even Oz, man, it was weird. It's like, it was like I had to, like, really. Like, would it still make your eyes water, it right? It would make From my eyes water. Yeah, but it's like, it took so much more to actually make an effect. Anything. Yeah. Wow. I was wondering that. I was it, wondering if they it still, would they, just still they hit work, you. They because... work, but not as intensely. Like, okay. Whereas other people, like, I could see them just getting blown away. I'm like. All right, I feel it. Yeah, they they yeah. recently cracked a bottle on uh, Rogan. Yeah, and, I saw that. Yeah, smelling, and I just laugh because I, I forget that normal people aren't exposed. Yeah, yeah. As like yeah. that's a normal part I, of your life is smelling that. I I don't do it. I don't do it. Thor made me do his. Uh, remember that he cracked yeah. he cracked a fresh bottle of fucking <sighs> amino or, or smelling salts. And I cried. I was like, yeah. He's like, no, Della, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you did that. <laughs> I'm crying, like, but I, I, I want to add something in terms of the smell. Um, so my smells mostly come back now, but I'm left with some odd lingering effects. Like now, coffee grinds smell like fish to me. <laughs> oh, what, a, what a bummer! I, I love coffee, dude, but coffee <sighs> grinds smell like fish now. Oh, man. It's so strange. Oh, that's so lame. Better that than, like, pizza. Yeah, I guess How so. How dare you, COVID? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get COVID? I did not. Me I don't, either. I'm not sure how. I, I didn't get it. We did an eight-week road trip in the middle of 2019 and – or, sorry, 2020. 20. And then ended at a fitness expo that I hug a bunch of people. In Utah, right? Yeah. But it, it's outside, and we are aware – the UV light, ah, whatever. Yeah. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a scientist. Yeah, I'm not a scientist, but I, I never got COVID, so. Brant got it, and then we were never not around Brant. Yeah. The no. only thing I can think is Bonnie and I, in, like, December of 19, we went to Costa Rica uh, to go do ayahuasca, and. Oh, beginning of 2020. Yeah, so, yeah. like. Jan- we were there for New Year's, yeah, mm. and I had a really rough flu going down, like for two days prior, and it was kicking it as we got there, yeah, like yeah. sweaty stuff like that. But I don't remember any smell or taste issues. Some no. people don't get it, yeah, yeah. and you might have just had a flu, you know, right? Yeah. I, I I don't think I don't think I've ever done an antibody test. And and the other thing is that's that was my only side effect. I felt a little off, but. The biggest thing was my taste and smell were gone. Like, yeah. And I just was indoors for two weeks. Like, oh, yeah, I feel pretty much normal, but can't smell things. And now I gotta. We got. We got. He got. He tested positive after Iceland, right? 
I think so. Yeah, and then, mm. and then that's when we were trying to ramp up for Rogue. It did. Page. It did put a dent into my yeah. training for a little bit. Yeah. 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 But yeah, still worked out. It still, it worked, still out. worked out. <laughs> when no, you're good enough to have COVID and still, work, <laughs> then, you yeah. know, that's that's the game. It is. That's yeah, so I was funny. I was so stressed in that contest, man. Dude, I have to say, man, like watching you guys together through social media and on there and like seeing you guys both pump together. <laughs> I fucking love it. I love that share of Stoke that yeah. like, yo, this is, it's a team. Like, I, and, and again, that's why I wanted you both on it. Oh, because, thank you. Yeah. Because I love it. And like, thank and, you. and then seeing what you've guys built with the gym and what you've guys built with your content and then the app, uh, the term I've been using a lot is it's universe creation. Yeah. You, you get oh. to fucking build your own universe, man. Like this gym, this doesn't have to compromise Yeah, to anyone. Yeah. It only has to be what you want. Yep. That's awesome. And That's it's why great, we did it. right? And like, you don't have to share this if you don't want to. Yeah. And I, man, I, I love that. And then the app, like people that want to deal with you guys, here it is. Yeah. Let, come in, be part of it. And, I mean, I I love seeing people do it. I love, I love seeing people too. build their own lives and build their own businesses. And man, we're in a hustle culture, dude. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. Hustle. I have no interest in having a real job. <laughs> yeah. I like working. Yeah. But I don't want a job. That makes sense. Yeah. Have you ever been in a cubicle space before? Um. What a question. The closest I've been was like the first job I got after my bike shop failed, and I was working in the petrochemical industry. Um, I had to go to an office and like, I had desk facing another guy's desk. Ooh, yeah. Like our oh, desk boy. touch. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, but that's as close. And there were like three of us in that room. Okay. Never but been. I've never done like full cube farm. No. I had a similar situation. Really? Yeah. You had a cube farm? Oh, no, 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 not cube farm. What, like similar situation to him. I was doing river surveying. Uh, like you were watching rivers? Well, we would go out. <laughs> <laughs> River viewer. Is like, <laughs> it's a fancy <laughs> word. <Connoisseur>. For... <laughs> I just like outside. <laughs> <laughs> you got paid for it. No, but what we would do is get the topography of uh, rivers using rivers, uh, I mean, sur surveyors levels. Uh, and we'd do this. For, we'd go camping for like two weeks at a time to get the data from rivers. Oh, wow. It was one of the coolest jobs I had. Yeah. So the summertime fantastic so in the winter we had to uh go through the data and that was all desk work and oh. then i was sitting at a desk for hours going through the data that we collected and is this massachusetts that was massachusetts oh, okay. yeah. that was one of the coolest jobs i had the summer part yep what's the worst job you've ever had domino's pizza delivering yeah. or making food? Uh, <laughs> calls and it was at uh i, I was uh, growing up in a college town of like, there were five colleges just to give you an idea this is amherst massachusetts uh when uh, during the summer, during the vacation time, the town's population is around ten thousand. Okay. W during school, population is fifty thousand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so th that's the kind of town I grew up in. Right, right. So I was doing dominoes on the weekends, at the, the night shift. So <laughs> I would be getting calls from drunk high people from like twelve to four a.m., and it would be like. Hello, this is Domino's. Can you please hold? And I'd be getting f three or four calls at once, and it was just, there's was impossible to keep with, up with the calls. <laughs> and every time I, a call dropped, I would get yelled at from my manager. <laughs> yeah, we can't make enough pizzas to fulfill any of this. The, 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 the make you got to make enough pizzas, and then there's, the phones are ringing constantly, and like, oh my goodness, just the juggling the phones. I wish my business had that problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah too right. many too people much. trying to yeah. ask. Uh, too many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how long, what, what year did you move to the States? How old were you? Uh, I was four years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. So him and I have a backstory, same backstory. I was really? five. I was five when I came here. Okay. Yeah. He when was... now both get us citizenship. Uh, green card. You got a green card. Mm -hmm. I was adopted. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on. How was the green card process? Uh, long, uh, expensive for my, my mom, for my parents. Um, a lot of took a while. yeah it took years i think i was like 14 or 15 when i finally got it wow so after more than 10 years of being in the united states are they still in massachusetts or um my dad's in massachusetts and my mom's in barcelona so barcelona they're, yeah okay. they're both remarried right on mm -hmm. right on uh, i have not been to barcelona best city one in of the, the world. best yeah is it great it is best city in the world bro. barcelona 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 it's one of my favorite <laughs> truly one of my favorite cities i've ever been to and if there was more of a strength culture I'd probably move there. Really? Yep. 
I mean, we could start a strength culture. There. Mm-hmm. I've considered it. That's true. I've considered yeah. it. Just have a you know wreck it gym Barcelona. East. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only thing is, it's expensive and uh, it's so slow paced. Which yeah. I, it's both beautiful. It's a double edged sword because it's wonderful when you want to relax, but when you want to get shit done can't. in Barcelona, you just want to rip your hair. You just out. can't. Yeah. Yes. I- Iceland goes the same way. Yeah. Like. They like, Europe operates at a different pace. They than do, we do. They do. Yeah. yeah. In general, um, unless you're in Germany, then it's just go, 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 go. Now, yeah, yeah they're, Germany's they're, cool. So, do you have any memories prior to the states? Uh, I mean, I go to Latvia. I've been to Latvia many times to speak the language. Okay. So then I have family there. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. And, and you? Do you do you have any memory of prior to? Oh, it's a uh, little little bits. So I've uh, I remember my my hut that I lived in got flooded. Oh. Yeah. And then I just recently, well, 2017, I uh, moved back there to see where I grew up, and it was. Crazy. Where where is this again? Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. Okay. I lived in a. Uh, I just remember growing up. I just remember red gate, and fucking seeing it in 2017. There was a red gate. I was like, oh, you were, shit. That's so cool. That's the red gate. I climbed Whoa. over. You know? That's so cool when the things come together. Yeah. Like Interesting. Yeah, but it was a hut. It was like not like a house or it was a hut. You know, there's a river where you That's take awesome. bats and come wow. back. It was, it was very different life. Very different life. Than, say, uh, learning to fly airplanes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, but everyone had motorcycles, man. Everyone had flip-flops wearing motorcycles, you know. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. were moving whole houses with motorcycles. I haven't got a chance to travel to Asia. Like, Southeast Asia, and I'm really – so we're going to it's Bali, It's definitely a I different think, experience. Next year. That's like Merrick Bali, though. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to spend some extra time there, but I'm interested. <laughs> I'm definitely interested in going to Bali. We're going to Patagonia next year. Oh, nice. Bali and Alaska. Yeah. And then we've got nice uh, motorcycle stuff that we're kind of chatting about. Yeah. yeah, we should do that. Like, We should do the whole uh, motorcycle trip with electric bikes, electric motorcycles, and your uh, gas power electric bike, or gas power motorcycles. I don't know that you'll be able to keep up. Because they got more range, yeah. They yeah. got more range, yeah. The electric bikes will slow I th- down. I think it's like a 200 miles per charge. Yeah, we're getting Is it there. really? No, it's no, it's 80. I remember. It's but 80. the top speed's like 50, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, they, mm. these these things roll. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very impressed with these bikes whenever we uh, were on that last trip. Like, yeah. uh, it, you know, the bagger, like that look is never an aesthetic that I've cared for. Mm. Yeah. But, dude, it's so <laughs> comfortable and rides so well, and your back's not beat up. Oh, and it's the Harley, right? The Harley. Uh, so it's Indian, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um got the bags on the back and got a back seat and a trunk. Wow. Yeah, it has stereo system and navigation. That's it has a windscreen so cool. that raises up and lowers down. Yeah. I mean, I spent better part of an hour, I bet, never touching the handlebars. What? Just sitting there, listening to music, kind of playing on the playing drums on the gas tank. And the bike oh, wow. just, yeah, they just want to go straight. Yeah. And so you just kind of lean, put a little pressure on your foot, put a little pressure on your foot, and you kind of just work through turns. And Holy shit. Why don't you just get like a Tesla car and just... <sighs> They're cool, too. You drive by itself. <laughs> a little different being in a, in a helmet. Yeah. Uh, I, I really liked it, man. It, it, it gave this way bigger piece of like um, mindfulness meditation that, yeah. than I expected. Because mm. you're busy. Yeah. Like, and you're on paying attention. Yeah. Whereas in a car, in a you car, can not give a shit. Yeah. Even driving. It's yeah. not hard. Yeah. But because you're also in a helmet, like there's yeah. no one to talk to. Yeah. And, and even so, if you like, have tunes. Like, you yeah, you're not looking at your phone. Yeah. You're paying attention. Yeah. There's just not a ton that needs immediate attention. So yeah. it, it was really cool that like over that that stretch, man, like it was it was oddly emotional, super therapeutic of just this Whoa. like I can't believe I got to do this trip and yeah. see this place and experience it. It was really interesting. That's cool. That's so cool. It's like flying down the street at a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. I've 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 been doing flying for like two weeks now. How's I've, that? I've yet to have that experience. Are <laughs> you just panic the whole like it's, it's just, just so much going on? Yeah. So much information. People are talking at your all the time. I'm like, I'm not I want the Zen, but like I'm learning, turning, landing and taking off. And uh highly recommend it if you guys wanna fly. It's just something mm. cool to do, but definitely stressful uh, stressful atmosphere. How how crazy is the barrier of entry to get in to start learning to fly? Bro, I just been, I play flight simulator for like four months now i was so blown away and it and transitioned to my ground i I had i could skip ground school and started flying the first day come on yeah (laughs) i was i I was so jealous when he told me that i'm like so there is actually a good purpose for this uh game 
Because, like, he would tell me, like, he, he would put, put us, like, in, in the game, it's so realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm blown away how well they recreate. They, they recreated the whole world using Google satellites and some AI. Like, you could fly anywhere. I could fly to your house. He, he took what? me. Yeah. He, he, uh, he was showing me this game off and showed me that he, he could, like, we went to, like, Amherst, my old town in Massachusetts. Yeah. Full around. I was like, that's where I live. No <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. a building where, like, I, I lived. And. And then we flew to Barcelona. We saw my mom's house, and like, yeah. it just—it's all there. It's, I, I can't believe that they recreated the planet, my man. Like, yeah. you know, I think the last time I had a flight simulator, and it was—it was one of the better ones. But I mean, if it's twenty years ago now, I bet I'm oh, probably dead amazing. on. Yeah, yeah and, and it was cool then. Yeah, it's holy ama- shit, it's, it's amazing, man. Like, amazing. I have to do every. I set up my settings where I do a constant checklist. So I have to go through all the checklists of the Cessna 172 G1000. And I have to make sure that the, the planes are right. I have to do all the proper checklists before I even take off. And, and like, were you relatively confident? Like, first- Bro, my first time flying a plane, I did all the checklists equivalent to the flight simulator. Now, how nerdy, if you really wanted to build your simulator, could you get? Like, can you, you get you- full controls and, like, a dash? Oh, dude, you could spend about $1,000 for the whole fucking dash, but then you just get a fucking plane you are just <laughs> go, 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 go to the real thing yeah, yeah. yeah. so what, what does it cost to go take a lesson um a lesson is about depending on, on the city a lesson is like uh, fifty dollars per instructor and then a hundred dollars to rent a plane that's an hour. really not bad it's 150 bucks that'll be so much more no. i was waiting to hear a comma involved no in... no it's pre- wow i thought it'd be so much more no but it takes 40 hours to get your private pilot so license. To do that forty times, yeah, forty times. It, it gets so four grand, yeah. So not, and, and then plus your pilot. So now you're talking about six what, grand, six thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah, six thousand dollars gets your pilot's license. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a lot of money. It, it, it is a lot of money, but, but it isn't unobtainable. Like if that's something tangible. you're it's, interested in, it's tangible. You that's know? doable. Oh, yeah. yeah. Versus like being a captain of the boat, where you have to do main, maintenance on the boat all the time, all the time. You have to learn how to sail. It's, it's more it's, it, being a pilot is more tangible than sailing. Now, once you get your pilot's license and you don't have a plane, or you can rent them out. So, so you could just rent the plane for the day. So um, what the fuck? So, so, <laughs> that seems so strange to me. So that, I, had a, I had a friend that was a pilot, and uh, it wasn't even that bad. It's like we had like four people. I think each one of us paid sixty bucks to do a little four seater plane, and we flew to Catalina and back. Yeah. And landed and hung out yeah, and then got yeah, back. Yeah, totally. So you can like rent it for the day or could yeah, you rent you it just, for the week? You can rent it for I, I don't know for a week. I have to ask my flight instructor, but every airport's different. Yeah. And um coincidentally enough, my flight instructor lived in Japan for two years, so he taught people how to fly in Japan. So I was like, dude, this is like nature calling, like all all the stars are lined up to go yeah, to Japan really cool. yeah. so he, he, he's gonna tell he's telling me he's teaching me the Jap- Japanese words of like how to do commands and wow. and instructions and navigations too so that's so cool yeah which is oh. like really cool because ultimately there's so many cool places in Japan that you either rent a boat or have to fly personally it's like, oh, ah, I can just fucking you rent, a, rent plane, a plane and you fly there land and then fucking fly back that's special it's gonna be in a lot of weird symbols on those. Things. Yeah, I'd be very nervous. Uh, <laughs> that is one thing. I'm like, he's, he's learning that right now. Learning Japanese. I've been learning for over a year now. Yeah. Yeah. Not Mandarin, just Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He speaks. Yeah, I just love Japanese culture. I love. Uh, I've always been a sucker for anime. Yeah. And uh, and he got he got this train rolling. Like he he's the one that you know, we were going to train one day. He put on Japanese lessons just for the fun of it, and then I just fell in love. And come on. Yeah. yeah. How gnarly of a language? What well, I barely speak English as far Same. as my <laughs> ability to <laughs> yeah. of linguistics. It, get, it got to a point where we hired a Japanese instructor to come one a week, once a week to. Uh, Dude, to she, she was here right before you guys. Yeah. Again, yeah. how cool that that's opportunity that we have now of, of again back to that building your universe. Yeah. yeah, you know, do the things you want to do. Exactly, yeah. just do invest it, man. in you. Just do it. Um, man, I, I love hearing that, and I, I man, I'm so excited about going to Japan. Yeah. I want to go bad. Like I want to. I'd like to hike Fuji. That's on my you, oh yeah. life list. Come with us. Okay, it, I'll it, just fly to Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> That's way better than hiking. Hey, just, I, hey Matt, <laughs> just drop us off. I think if you're gonna climb Fuji, you got to look up when uh, it's the most sunny in Japan. I hear that most of the year it's super, super cloudy. cloudy. So it's and like foggy. Iceland. Yeah, it's like 
that northern Japan at least, like most most of the year, you won't even be able to see Fuji. Where where is it uh, so latitude so- wise? Where where are we equivalent to? Like is it like closer to Washington or is That's it a good question actually? Or is it oh. further south? I think it's it's near Russia. Right, uh, right. Uh, I know it's just south of like Vladivostok. Russia's Vostok. Vostok. Yeah, so, my, yeah, I don't yeah. know how it compares. The, so it's probably like equivalent to Washington, Oregon. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. The on, the only thing I know about Vladivostok, my brother used to. I, I was I was going to go there. Man. I was going to go there. Yeah. For Moss Wrestling. Oh, yeah. right on. Yeah, yeah. with with Ode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, yeah, my brother did Pro Strongman for a oh, handful of years. And uh, he went over and competed in Vladivostok with Travis as a USA versus Russia. What? Mm. Wait, Travis Oldemeyer? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was. Yeah. I don't know Stone what year that lifter. was. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I had him on the podcast like a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> Travis? Yeah. Hell he's in, yeah. Um, I always, in Reno. How cool is that? I love Travis. You know, yeah. he has, he, that guy has nipple rings and he's a stone lifter. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's bold. Like two combinations <laughs> that you don't want to be with, man. That's pretty interesting to me. Tacky and nipple rings, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, hearing, hearing his story. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. Out of the dark, dude. Yeah. Like, he disappeared from the world, it seemed like, for years and then yeah. came back. I mean, he, he talked about meth addiction and everything yeah. there and, like, Incredible. everything – that that landed. It's just amazing how well put together, like intelligent of a man he is now, and strong and health seems to be healthy. Like and back strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Back competing, like like multiple I, shows now. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. I'm well really done, impressed. Dude. Really impressed. And has the miles on him. Yeah. What other strongman have you have you uh, done podcasts with? Um, uh, Haffy. Haffy. Yep. Oh, I did one no with Hector, uh Stefan Solvi. Oh, oh, classic! Um, Great, Hasey and those guys in Iceland, Runar. Yeah. Um, where's Strongman? Fuck Runar! <laughs> just, kidding, just, kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I love that you, Runar. fucking guy. Yeah. dude, I love, I love the Icelanders. Um, they're, dude, like we were, uh, we had, we make, uh, so they're, in, they're intense. They're very intense with lifting, man. Come on, come on! It makes you want to just kill people, yeah. bro. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's, but <laughs> you get your blood boiling just yeah. hearing it. It's like the best it's the best chant ever. Yeah, yeah. They're they're fun, man. Um I've just always felt very at home there. In Iceland. Yeah. yeah so I, I'm aware at some point I'm gonna make a move to take a chapter and live there for a period of time. Oh. I don't yeah. know how long. Maybe six you months every year. You could Airbnb oh. it too. Right. Yeah. Right. Or and that's what we've done. Like I mean, when we're there for three weeks, we end up just staying with Hasey and Mm, we yeah. do that, and then we usually rent a camper van, and oh, then we can nice. fuck off and sleep That's in the van. Cool, yeah. That's cool. We should do that next time. Uh, I like that. But you know, we've only gone to Iceland to tr- to train. Not like so I don't go to train anymore. To I'm, I'm happily retired. To tra- yeah, to <laughs> yeah. travel. We I think our last trip was probably the most we've driven in Iceland. Dude, there's so much cool stuff outside of Reykjavik, you, of course. You know what's yeah. really funny? So like, Martins likes sun. He likes coffee. And he likes beach, and then. Our it's la- not the ideal place. The last trip we had with my wife, I was like, hey, we're going to go to the south. It's sunny. You should come with us. And he's like, no, I'm too tired. Because this is after our six-hour road trip, too. That, that was just pure rain and fog. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so done with this driving. I'm sure you fit in a car there well. Huh? Oh, man, no. Had a real big, comfortable vehicle, and I saw that ticket. Holy hell, no. <laughs> so my wife and I, Michelle, we drove to the south part, which is the best part of Iceland. It was sunny. At one point, we saw herds of horses yeah. driving by us, you know, and then it was like, like toward the glacier lagoon. You went that, yeah, that way. That yeah. way, and then we went by uh, Black Sand yeah, Beach, in, in Vic, to wherever it was. <laughs> and no joke, it was, it was sunny. You could see across the ocean. There was a coffee shop with a window on the beach. I'm like, man, you missed out. Yeah, you missed out. So we're we're there this summer with this group of twenty, and so it's a six day trip what? with this yeah. group yeah. and um. Was was really really great, and uh, the weather the whole time, man, was sixty seven, sixty eight degrees, sunny. What? And no wind. What? For mm. six days. Did you see the volcano? Oh yeah. Oh my god, oh, man! man. So, lucky. so lucky. The craziest. Yeah. I, I. It's one of the weirdest things. Brant got a ton of red drone stuff and wow. all this from it. Like just staring yeah. at it, it's like. I shouldn't be able to see this and a glacier today. No. Yeah, right? No. It's it's very different world. Like it was, that's it's not Earth. It, 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 it when you're even when you're flying into Iceland, it feels like you're flying into a different planet. It feels a hundred percent not here. Yeah. It's it's still yeah. like the newest 
land of mass. Right, right. I think, right? What was your mom saying? It's like the news land of mass. It's constantly developing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And it's still yeah. building more Iceland. Yeah, it's still. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, I, I keep going back. Yeah. You know, I, I like the people. I like the vibe. I want to go really nice. Argentina is my. I want to really go to Argentina. Yeah, I'm Me stoked too. on the Patagonia thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's going on. With that. So that's all the way in Argentina. So we have another trip with Trova Trip, where we're we're going to Patagonia oh, to go hike cool. and do yeah. all this other type of stuff. The thing I'm trying to look at as an availability, if we're all the way south there, that's right. It's one of the closest points to the uh, Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah, there's a ferry. Yeah, that's right. To yeah. South Pole. Yeah, dude, we well, you have, just to Antarctica. You have to. I just it. like to see it. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've added. That is I'm, I'm going to start digging, and figuring out. What do you know how needs. long of a ferry trip? That I don't is? know. Just fly there, no bro. Idea. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I want to remember. This is your go. answer now for anything. Now that <laughs> Captain Air, yeah, yeah right. Air Captain yeah, of yesterday over here. Had here. One, had one lesson. <laughs> one lesson. Uh, we'll just fly there. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> I'll rent planes in any country. Yeah. Yeah. Just fly there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Metallica has, is the only band that had a concert in Antarctica. They did. Yeah, they have. The, I think. They had um oh, how? they just do it as a record to be the only people who've done it. Yeah. A bunch of every penguins con- in like- every in every continent. It's <sighs> crazy. Man, I, the other place I've added to my travel list is in Portugal is uh Nazare. Nazar- I want to surf it, yeah. I'm oh. not interested in that. Yeah. Uh I I'd like to see the ocean do that. You know what's crazy? That wasn't on the map till two thousand. 11. Yeah, right, right. Until Greg McNamara and yeah. those guys got it's, over there and started that, yeah, surfing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't, isn't that it, crazy? This is like where the big crazy waves 100 are? 100-foot waves. Yeah, 100-foot waves. It's, it's currently the biggest place that consistently puts up waves. Yeah. Wow. And so, like, looking at it, it's March through October yeah. is kind of the window for weather. And it seems, if you go for three weeks, you should be able to catch a, a day. Yeah. Wow. And, I mean, I think the biggest catch probably day ocean, where, where you'll see it do that. Enormous waves, yeah. yeah. And and I think the biggest ocean I've probably ever been in or dealt with, I, I bet, is probably possibly like Washington. Eight foot. It, whoa. Maybe eight foot seas. Yeah. And I surfed that. And it's <laughs> right, right. Which is it's big. Yeah. That's still big waves. Yeah. Have yeah. you have you got eaten by a wave like tumble? No. Um. Oh. Yeah, but nothing like that big. Dude, it's it's a it's, uh, a, it's definitely a humbling experience. Wow. I've done some. Yeah. I haven't got really tumbled in a wave. Uh, I got pretty tumbled on a whitewater rafting trip. This <laughs> uh, it was for sure, like, when I popped back up. Well, that's even worse. You have rocks and shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I popped back up, and I for sure had a moment of, uh, without this borrowed life vest, I'm dead. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, Whoa. that's the first time I feel like I could ever say that in my yeah. life, that without Whoa. this thing that I borrowed today from Whoa. a guy I don't know, yeah. wow. I no longer exist. Wow. And this was in um, Zimbabwe. You went to Zimbabwe? Yeah. What? So we went to... Africa. Oh, that's right. That's right. You went to Africa to Dubai. Yeah. yeah. So we went to Africa uh, in the summer to do the whitewater rafting trip with some friends. Yeah. So we did three days on the Zambezi. Yeah. And the whitewater's big. Did you, have, did you have to get a shot for, to, to go after? I didn't. Wow. Yeah, okay. nothing. No military I mean, Other shot? than COVID stuff. Really? Really was pretty easy pass through. Um, Yo, know, Africa's awesome. Yeah. Have you been for any of the contests? Yes, I was uh, in Botswana two, two years okay. in a row. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the coolest trips of my life. Yeah, uh, so we, we went into Botswana. Where in Botswana? Uh, the first year I was in Kasane, which was right by the uh, river um, and one of the most uh, well preserved, like nature preserves in, uh, in Africa. So- it was just unreal. It was like Narnia, dude. Like from uh, my um, bamboo like hotel like <laughs> thing, like I was able to see the river. I was able to see baboons from my window, uh, elephants, giraffes, um, and, and and crocodiles, all from my balcony and window. Yeah, we, we're we staying in Zimbabwe in Victoria Falls at like a, a lodge, and so we're in tents, but tent is a stretch. Like yeah. I have sliding glass doors, it locks, I have a ceiling yeah. fan, but it, it's canvas walls, mm-hmm. right? Uh there's an elephant that comes, like, walks by my glass door, like, like 10 oh. feet away from my door, like, while I'm laying in bed. Whoa. And I just had this moment of, like, there's nothing that keeps you from coming in here if you want to come in here. Holy hell. And then we went outside on the patio and, like, just stared Did at you ride it. it? Very nerve. Fuck, no, I don't want to get anywhere near that oh, giant lo- thing. Oh, I would love to ride it. Right? We, had, we had a time, like, we're there the first night, 
and they call us from the lodge and they're like, do you guys want to go see lions? Uh, we have five that are on a kill. <clears throat> wow. And like, oh yeah, rad. So we hop in the thing. It's maybe 200 yards from where I'm sleeping. <laughs> Whoa. And, and like there was other times where i got a call and it was like hey before you guys come to the lodge tonight call us so that we'll come get you and, and with a gun <laughs> and walk you to dinner <laughs> because for, we have a couple oh lions i could hear them out of my tent just like i'm like yeah. dude that's cool i would love to do that so cool yeah, lions are cool. super scary yeah. i would just do i would just tent it out they're so scary i would tent it out i would like to hug a lion interesting yeah. I, I don't you know how well they hug someday. back. <laughs> concern yeah. me. Like some, a tiger. Do you think you could days. befriend it? Oh, how for sure. long do you think you need to cultivate that relationship? I just got I just got to be a lion, you know. You watch too much of that guy on it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot his name. You got to realize that all of that isn't like this. They're used to people. <laughs> These aren't. It was crazy seeing like elephant and baboon and giraffes like on the even that, just drive into our place that was they look at them like deer. Like yeah. the way that people are annoyed by yeah. deer in our country of like, yeah. oh, I'm not a giraffe. Deer in the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was so rad, funny. man. I would love no, to go yeah. back there. Um, yeah, I would, let's do, let's do that for my birthday, man. In June. Dude, safari, yeah. Africa, super cool. I, uh, I think in June I'm going to uh, Montana. Columbia. And Montana. Oh, I don't know. I got to figure that one out. Well, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't think I'll be back to Dubai anytime soon. Why? <laughs> It's all right. It's, uh, uh, dude, that's what I said. It felt like Vegas. Yeah. It's, just it's like Vegas without the excitement. It's it's Vegas with heavy religious undertones. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. And that's not my cup of tea. Yeah, it's just, Vegas it's isn't just my cup of tea. It's more expensive. And I don't need that happen. I don't, I, I don't, I, I mean, I love Dubai. I love the desert. It's so far, I wouldn't live there. It's the hottest place I've ever been. I was yeah, really man, shocked that too. by that. Growing up in Louisiana and doing all that, like, it's I, dry I've heat been too. hot. Yeah, yeah. But man, I, just walking outside, I just felt assaulted. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? Deathly, What's going on? Deathly heat sometimes. We went yeah. to the wintertime and felt hot, dude. That's insane. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't go back. No. There's other places. If, I'm, if I've got to travel that far. That was one of the longest trips, too. Yeah. yeah I, there's no you, good way to get there. Have you, have, have you, <laughs> have you been to Kyrgyzstan? No. Dude, that's, that a, was that's my favorite trip. Did y'all go there to compete? Yeah. It's a boss wrestling uh, tournament, but it was just – we we were by the lake, East East Cool, and, I mean, this lake is one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen. Like, that felt like Narnia for me. That was yeah. truly spectacular. Like, you could look across the lake, and it's just, like, crystal clear, mm. but it looks like an ocean because it's so big. It's, you can't see anything across well, it. You think you can't. Because you see all these, it looks like, like it's fog. Yeah. You see like these white clouds in the like horizon, but then you squint a little closer. Those aren't white clouds. Mountains. Those are white cat mountains. Yeah, Whoa. but it's, they're so far away. They look like clouds. Yeah. Oh man. And no, it's it cheap. Was... It's so cheap. We uh we rented horses from like this ten year old like five bucks. <laughs> you know. Can we borrow your horses? <laughs> no joke. We all bought horses. <laughs> you know. I I, I that poor horse. Like, I mean, <laughs> Uh, these guys, my 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 moss wrestling team, the Romar included, they they were like you know trotting and cantering and just running around with all these horses, giggling like yeah, we're having a great time. <laughs> my poor horse, I like kicked it. I'm like, come on, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> kruk, 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 kruk. Come on, let's go. Kruk, kruk, kruk. It just refused. It refused to go anywhere. Oh, no. It was like what that poor horse, man. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. he Dude, was not having it. I, I, I mean, this this life and everything that's come with it. I, how often do you guys have a moment of like, I can't fucking believe. I th- for me, every day. Yeah, yeah. The gratitude for this thing's wild. Every day, man. I'm surfing till nine a.m. and I'm like, oh shit, I guess I have to go in and do something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it, you know, back to where we started this about kids, you know, looking at the YouTube thing as a viable option. I think the big disconnect that people want to pretend is that it's not a job. Yeah. And it is. Dude, it is. It is, it is a job. For sure. It, it, is. it is a monster that's never fed. Yeah. And there's freedom with it. But what people don't understand is like most people's jobs, like you have an idea of what the task is that day. That's yeah. true. And someone's like, hey, I need you to do this. And you go, sick. And then you do that thing. Whereas what we do creating, it has to come out of ether. Yeah. yeah. Like we have to write the script. We have to figure out the subject. What do they want to hear? Who are we addressing? Who's the yeah. audience? And then 
being available for them. It's then you got to keep yourself accountable. You got to keep yourself consistent. Yep. Consistency. And what was it? What was it? Academy? Consistency. Accountability, accountability and creativity. Yeah. CAC. CAC. We need some CAC. We need, need some to be CAC. CAC. The big CAC, baby. I love that. Yeah. We, we, uh, we're trying to figure out like. Big CAC energy. What does it take to do that? Because it's not a lot of work, but it is consistent. It's just, you need to be accountable. It's, you need to be creative. You can't phone it in ever. Like Wait. that's like you know what I mean like like I've had jobs where it's like mm, I can kind of phone it in yeah, yeah I, I don't, don't have, have to try real day. hard yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 you know I can just exist yeah and get the job that's done so true yeah you can't don't can't just walk in and just be in the space and then there there's your hours ah, yeah. you have to have the intention with it every yeah, day that's for, a good point for, yeah for the direction um and that that's what I tell people man is like look anything worth doing is gonna be hard work yeah. oh so for that's sure. a given for whether sure, you're yeah. doing it for someone else or you're building your thing. Yeah. yeah. So you're not escaping that part. That's true. Just I, ha- I, I'm, I'm just glad I have the ability to just do. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta keep working at it, chopping away. You know. Look, I know, uh, I know, we're coming to wrap up, oh, and shit, you guys have, yeah. uh, have, a, have a thing going on at noon. Where, where can everyone find everything? You can find my OnlyFans at Real Mark Weiss. <laughs> I got mine saved. Yeah. At least I've, I have it so no one can take my name. <laughs> really? Fuck yeah, man. If any platform pops up, I go grab yeah. my shit. That's great. <laughs> Need someone trying to sell it to yeah. me later on yeah. if I realize. Yeah. Because yeah. I even thought about the OnlyFans is like, do, do I just use this to see if people want to do pay content from me? Yeah. And so like I would treat it like an Instagram. It's like that, Patreon. Yeah. That is, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the same way I would treat it. Like yeah. Treat it like an Instagram that doesn't. I'll never advertise to you. Yeah. Mm. If you would like to have an ad-free version of me, here it is. Mm. And, yeah. you know, like an extra version of, you know, for five bucks a month, I will never advertise to you. Interesting. Okay. So I thought yeah. about it like that as an interesting turn. And then, oh. I mean, then the other money I hear people make. I'm like, <laughs> Looks like I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't doing this innocently anymore. Yeah. Well. Man. I, I'm, I'm stoked to hear the body's back working. I'm stoked to I'm see you so back. I'm so stoked to be back. Kicking ass. Yeah. Are, you, are you going to be at the Arnold's? Um, I don't know. Uh, right now, we had talked about going and just kind of getting an Airbnb and podcasting that week since yeah. everyone's in town. Yeah. But that's now the kind of week before we're going to do the first trip with Indian. Okay. And I think pre-production would probably be better spent than me being in Columbus. Makes sense, man. Yeah. Do you yeah, think? I'd rather invest yeah. in the thing that we've got going on. Yeah, that, do it. Like, my dream is a travel show. Yeah. Right? Like, that. the first thing that we were doing on YouTube was a series, uh, Drift a Lifta, I put yeah. out. And we did it for five years. We traveled and filmed it and That's cool. shot the whole thing. Never took off. No one's ever cared yeah. much. Uh, but, you know, we fucking did it. You know, we had an it, idea yeah. and we fucking made it and it exists. Yeah. That's cool. And now someone's offering the option. To, to, to fund it and have this thing. Oh, and so for wow. me, it's, yo, this is the dream. Yeah. Like, it's not, I can't put the dream expectation as well to like, well, but it's not on Netflix or it's not on any of this. Like, what's the fucking difference? I think, I think yeah. people try too hard. Just, just gotta do it. I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm the, I try too hard too. Like I gotta make a show. We have, we have to make a show on Netflix, but you know what? Fuck, we have our own YouTube channel. We just, have our own channel. Just fucking do it, dude. Yep. Like, man, lean into those people that have already raised their hands that are, that are stoked on you. Yeah. yeah. You know, the people that aren't, eh, Fuck enjoy it, yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Where, you, where can they find you, Martins? Uh, check us out on uh, YouTube, Martins Litsis. That's M-A-R-T-I-N-S. My last name, L-I-C-I-S. And or Instagram, same thing. Uh, also, check out wreck It Gym if you guys are ever in Los Angeles and want to come by uh, El Segundo. We're right by the airport. So come lift some strongman stuff with us. And also download and subscribe to the wreck it Power App on the Google Play Store and Apple Store. Sick. That's it. Thank you. Sign off for us in Japanese. Oh, I wish I... Uh, you don't have that? that you can't say? How about, how about Jamata Ashita? Jamata Atode. Yes. I don't know what that means. I like it, though. I'll see you later. Perfect. Oh. Jamata Atode? So Jamata, Jamata Miss, I'll see you. Jamata Ashta is I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Then Jamata Atode is like later. Atode. Atode. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. My southern mouth won't do that. <laughs> <laughs>